Amen. I'll be reading this morning from James um, chapter 3, verses 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humili humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Chris and Mandy, I think this morning, oops, I'm not on, sorry. Chris and Mandy this morning, I think, gave us uh, a great glimpse of what this whole book of James is about and what we've been talking about the last few weeks and what we're leading up to next week. So thank you for, for your words this morning. Who is wise and understanding among you? Well, how's that for a loaded question to start off? I know that looking around this room, there are a lot of people here who are wise. There are a lot of people here who know a lot and think they are wise. And there are many of us who are still growing in our wisdom. I'm not sure which category I fall in. I really struggled with knowing what to write for the sermon. I mean, how do you seek wisdom to preach on wisdom? I actually thought I might just use the passage that's uh, earlier in James that says, uh, a wise man is quick to listen and slow to speak, and then just give you all 15 minutes of quiet time. Today we're going to explore this idea of wisdom by going through this passage we read one section at a time. We're going to look at the misconception that knowledge and IQ equals wisdom. We'll take a deeper look at the characteristics of one whose wisdom is grounded from above and one whose wisdom is grounded from below. We'll look at a few ways to self-evaluate a bit of where our wisdom comes from the types of wisdom those around us are using, and ways to grow our wisdom in a way that is in line with wisdom from above. So who among you are wise? How do you know when someone is wise? Let's look at a couple definitions here real quick um, with words that uh, may be associated with wisdom. The first one we'll look at is knowledge. Knowledge are facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Awareness or a familiarity gained by experience of a fact or situation. IQ, or intelligence quotient, is a measure, a measure of intelligence of an individual derived from results obtained from Let me try that again. A measure of the intelligence of an individual derived from results obtained from specially designed tests. And EQ, or emotional intelligence, this might be a newer one for some of you. A notional measure of a person's adequacy in such areas as self-awareness, empathy, and dealing sensitively with other people. Are these three things wisdom? They aren't. I think they all play a role in someone who has wisdom, but in and of themselves are not wisdom. I actually think EQ, or emotional intelligence, may be one of the biggest factors in someone who displays good wisdom. We'll also look at a definition of wisdom. Wisdom is the quality of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment, the quality of being wise. 
the soundness of an action or decision with regard to application of experience, knowledge, and good judgment. I found it quite interesting that one of the synonyms for wisdom is simply common sense. You might know persons who are super smart. We all had those people in school that we knew that were getting done with, they were the first one done with tests every time. Super duper smart people. But when dealing with people or other life situations around them, they lacked common sense or the ability to relate to other people. Wisdom comes when we take our knowledge from the things that we've studied and learned and from life experiences that we've had along the way and apply common sense and understanding in a way that leads others in a wise way. We've just added another element to wisdom, and that's the ability to lead. Think about the people who you follow and the people you respect and take advice from. They are probably people who have had a lot of life experience and are able to lead you with their wisdom. You wouldn't follow someone who's unwise or who's regularly given you advice that's gone sour or has been in a wise way. In fact, you probably would have very little respect for someone like that who proves to be unwise. We're going to break down this passage into three different sections. We're going to start with James 3.13, if, if we could have the first passage up there again. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. This first verse sets up this section on wisdom with a few important thoughts. Persons who are wise are going to let their wisdom impact their actions by living a good life. And they will act in a humble way. James says as much in James 1.19 when he says, uh, I mentioned this verse earlier a little bit, when he says, wise, a wise person should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. This is what part of living humbly is about. It's about listening to those around you, using your knowledge when the time is right to give your input in a way that is clear and helpful to those around you, and to be slow to anger. A commentary I read this week even said that to take this a bit further, to humbly endure others' anger. How hard is that? Listening and using your humble wisdom to not get angry back or not think of what I can say to put them in their place, but to bring resolve to them in the matter. When we are humble with our wisdom, others will know that you are wise. You could even say that speaking out of passion is also contrary to using wisdom. Now don't get me wrong, it is good to have passions. It's very important for us to have our passions. But when we let our passions do the talking, it's usually not done in a humble way. And we can quickly off be offended when somebody else isn't on board with, with what we're presenting. That can lead to taking offense at others' thoughts instead of listening to others' ideas and humbly working with them. We'll look at the next section, James, 3, James 3, 14 to 16. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. In this section, we see where a lack of wisdom starts. <clears throat> in verse 14, it says, bitter envy and selfish ambition. When our motives are self-absorbed, boastful, slow to listen, when we're slow to listen to others and are envious, then, then the wisdom that we're pretending to have is full of holes. This wisdom is not a wisdom that comes from above, from our God but is grounded on the ideals of this earth. It's unspiritual and demonic. These may seem like harsh accusations saying that something is demonic, but 
You can also look at the other side of it. Where there is heavenly wisdom, there is no room for bitter envy and selfishness. Our hearts can't harbor both. This comes back to the passage that states you can't serve two masters. It's one or the other. If we're struggling with only looking out for our own good and struggle, struggle with looking out for those around us, we may not be as close to Christ as we think. I would guess that if our motives are, are selfish in that way, our lives are also full of tension and full of confusion. And we probably aren't really having as much fun internally as what we want people to think externally. This can start a vicious cycle of us trying to make ourselves keep looking good. And in order to do that, we often can step on other people's toes or climb over somebody else or put other people down just to make ourselves look good. We might look good on the outside to some people but it's just going to create more tension and more confusion inside. In the last part of this passage, we see more of, this heavenly, of what this heavenly wisdom is all about. James 3, 17 to 18. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure. Then, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. This is a wisdom I'm excited to talk about this morning. This wisdom here is, first of all, pure. That means its motives are founded in love. Already we see a distinct difference from the other kind of wisdom. Next we have heavenly wisdom is peaceable. It's gentle and willing to yield. It doesn't get caught up in, in passionately plowing through a room to get a point across, but to peacefully and gently work with those around us and is even willing to yield to others' thoughts. It's full of mercy when someone is in the wrong. It sows good fruits, not fruits of deception or division or dissension. Heavenly wisdom doesn't show partiality or play favorites. It will always hold up with truth and won't be wishy-washy and full of hypocrisy. This wisdom is found in peacemakers looking to bring peace to others. My Bible is a, a study Bible uh, put together by John Maxwell. It's called the Leadership Study Bible. In one of its study sections, it gives some good insights to the passage we're looking at today. And you can put up the, the next slide here. There's two columns to it. James speaks of two kinds of wisdom. Wisdom from above and wisdom from below. Good leadership intuition always springs from wisdom from above. Wisdom from above is gentle and generous. From below is selfishly ambitious and jealous. Wisdom from above speaks the truth. Wisdom from below speaks lies and deceives. Wisdom from above is pure and organized. Wisdom from below is disorderly and demonic. Wisdom from above results in peace. Below results in, in disharmony. Wisdom from above is reasonable. From below, it's self-centered. And wisdom from above is the fruit of love and mercy. And from below is the, strife, is the fruit of strife and competition. As you look at these lists, where do your tendencies lie? Do you fall more in line on the right or on the left? I also want to add that the wisdom from below list really, in my opinion, isn't wisdom at all. This wisdom from below is all stuff that actually comes naturally to us. It's, it's called human nature. And human nature can be a tough thing to get past or work through, but, but God called us to die of our human nature, to put it on the cross and be born again and becoming a new nature. And that's where wisdom truly sits. 
Our intuition might be a good place to gauge our level of wisdom. When you need to react or respond to something in a moment's notice, where does your intuition take you? Or when you're trying to read the sense of a room, where does your intuition take you? Does it take you to a place of wisdom from above or from below? A place that looks out just for your best interests. A couple weeks ago, Wes talked about taming your tongue. This too may be a gauge of our intuitive, where our intuitive wisdom lies. Do you have trouble with a tongue that tears others down? A tongue that throws swear words around? A tongue that, um, a tongue that is self-motivated and others destructive? When you talk about people and they aren't in the room, is it to make yourself look better and to tear them down? Like Wes led us through a couple weeks ago, we must be able to train our tongue through good discernment and wisdom and not let our words just rattle off destruction in the heat of the moment. We've talked a lot about wisdom this morning, but not much yet on how to acquire wisdom. So we're going to shift into that direction. I'm going to read through a number of other passages through the Bible that, that reference wisdom. Look at what James 1.5 says. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault. It will be given to him. <clears throat> Proverbs 19.20 says, Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Job 12.12-13 12 Wisdom is with the aged and understanding in length of days. The more we live, the more experiences we have, and the more understanding and wisdom we should gain. With God, our wisdom and might, he is counsel and understanding. Proverbs 1.7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. If you despise being corrected or getting advice from someone who is more wise than you, you might fall in the fool category. <laughs> Proverbs 3 to 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Proverbs 23 12. Apply your heart to instruction and your ear to words of knowledge. These passages have several themes in them. First is that wisdom comes from a willingness to learn, to be open to instruction, to listen to advice, and to not just listen, but to be open to that instruction and heeding it and taking it. And to also ask questions as well. Going back to the James 1.5 passage, it says, If you lack wisdom, ask God for it, and he will give generously to all. A second theme here is to seek and to trust God. He is where true wisdom is really found. It's founded in him, and it's, it's likely... If it isn't founded in him, it's likely grounded in selfish motives. I want to give a couple more thoughts on how to grow our wisdom. Surround yourself with people who are wise. Create your, for yourself an inner circle. A group of people you trust and respect and who you deem as wise. Meet together, meet one-on-one, -on -one, ask questions, listen to advice, and learn from those who have gone before you. Or people who have just had a, simply a different, different life experiences than you. This is one of the things that we hope to provide in our youth groups. Our sponsors have so many things to share. We all come from different backgrounds. And our hope is that our youth can slow down just enough, first of all, to get here. And second, that they can slow down enough to hear and pick up a few stories and hearing journeys from, from our sponsors and, and other people that we have come in so that they may gain a bit more wisdom and may not make the same mistakes that we have. It's not too late for us as adults either. Look around this room. There's so much wisdom floating around here. Share your stories with each other. Pass your stories on to your families. Grow together. Care for one another. That your words of wisdom will be pure and build people up. Be careful not to take advice or wisdom 
or even listen to someone whose words may harm someone in the future. If someone comes to you in a conversation and and starts out with, you won't believe what such and such did, that's probably a sign that they're not going to be lifting that person up, but that they might be ready to tear them down. Be careful. Again, a couple of weeks ago, Wes talked about how we use our words, and I think this plays so well in, in in, in how we use our wisdom as well. Often our wisdom is shown by others through how we use our words. Is there wisdom found in talking in others in, about others in a negative way when they aren't present? So it's a very thin line of, of going to a friend and, and talking about a situation that you, uh, of, of, uh, of discord you might have with somebody. There's a fine line between asking them for advice and throwing the other person under the bus. This is not wisdom from above. So are words, are your words showing you to be wise or self-centered and careless? One of the last elements I want to look at is wisdom that is grounded in love and truth. We are part of a nation who I fear has turned Christianity back into something of the Old Testament. One that is grounded in obeying laws, calling out people when they break laws, and holding people out of our churches and even out of our businesses. We can even look at our very own Mennonite Church USA, and we're not the only denomination that has gone this way. And We see two sides to the love and truth thing in our faith. We are called to love. This is the greatest commandment that Jesus tells us but with a love that is of God. This call to love doesn't mean that people can do just whatever they want and get a free pass into heaven. There are churches who once taught that Christ is the only way who now teach that Christ is one of the ways to get to heaven and that all we must do is love. Love we must do, but we also must be held up by truth. And not be just given a free pass to do whatever feels good or do whatever is right for me. Then we have the other side of the church who who feels it important to speak truth at all costs. This side leads with truth and doesn't even let anyone close enough to feel our love. We feel it more important to speak loud. We feel it more important. Sorry, we feel it more important to speak loud about rights and wrongs, and we don't give the people the chance to be loved or to let them know that Christ loves them. Everyone in this room was created by God. Everyone not in this room was created by God. I talked with our youth at Faith Mission of Elkhart that God holds us up like a child would hold up a a piece of art that they just did. And they're gleaming, look what I did. That's the way God holds up His creation. With that same kind of joy and love, whether they're in this room or not. I think that in regards to truth and love, wisdom comes when they are both held together high in unity. We are called to love to build relationships with people unlike ourselves, to care for the weak and the unchurched. And through loving like Christ loved, not, one, not a love that just gives a free pass, but a lo- with a love that genuinely cares for what's best for others, we will gain respect. We will build relationship. And we will gain trust for those who don't know Christ like we do. And at some point, we will have a moment to speak truth. And when those who don't know Christ like we do hear us speaking truth in that situation through a relationship that's been built, through a respect and trust that's been built, they will know it comes from true, genuine care and love for them and not from just a place of telling them what they're doing wrong. This, I think, is how Christ intended 
for love and truth to interact together. And I think in doing so is another way in which we show wisdom that comes from heaven. And this would line up with our column from the above side. I think using love as a way to just look the other way or using truth to make sure people know that they're doing wrong both fall under the wisdom from below category. I want you to think again about your inner circle. Think about the people that are closest to you right now. How are they leading you? Are they self-motivated? Or are they looking to care for those around them? Do they use words that build others up? Or do they routinely tear others down? Are they quick to let everyone know how smart they are and give their answers before anyone gets a chance? Or are they willing to listen and respond in ways that are respectable, gentle, and full of peace and truth? If they are mostly looking to make themselves look good, they may not be the best place for you to be gathering your wisdom. Surround yourselves with people who will make you wiser with a wisdom grounded in Christ. As you've seen over the past few weeks, and we'll conclude with next week, this book of James is all about showing us that our faith, as it grows in our understanding of the story of God that he's put in place through the Bible and through the life and teachings of Jesus, that our faith will impact how we live. It will impact the choices that we make. It will impact the actions that we take. And it will spread Christ's story to those around us. Our faith must move us. And it must move us now. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. I'm guilty of this myself, of, of holding off having conversations because I don't quite have it all together yet. I don't know what I'm going to say. Or I'm too nervous or scared to approach somebody and talk to them about something. We need to add some urgency about sharing our love and sharing our faith. We all have neighbors, coworkers, family members, friends that we should be reaching out to more, loving more, and leading to Christ. We all know this gift of having Christ. That's what brings us here today. And we can all look back at our lives and see as our lives have gone on that we've gained more wisdom and understanding of who Christ is and how it impacts us. God has given us a call and a charge to spread this gift. Someone did the same for each and every one of us. That's what got us here in the first place. Someone took the time to share this story with you and it's time to pass it on in a way that uses a wisdom that comes from heaven. I want to close with reading James 3, 13 to 18 again, but this time I'll be using a paraphrase from the message. James 3, 13 to 18. Live well, live wisely. Do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. Live well, live wisely, Live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk, that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise still isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning and devilish conniving. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, Things fall apart, and everyone ends up at others' throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. It's gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings. Not hot one day and cold the next, not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its results only if you do the hard work 
of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Turn in your hymnals to number 226, 226. You are salt for the earth. We'll sing the leader part, and if you could join where it says all. You are salt for the earth, O oh people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of the Justice. 